If you're familiar with the term, chances are this is what you picture when you hear Shuttle PC. A small, nondescript computer that can go just about anywhere. But working in a computer repair shop in the early 2000s, the first time my boss said that he had ordered one, I immediately pictured something decidedly more nerdy. A Star Trek shuttlecraft that just so happens to be a computer. So, this week, my fellow time travelers, we're going to be doing something we've never done before. We're setting the way forward machine all the way to the 24th century by swapping this shuttle PC for my dream shuttle PC with a little help from my transporter. <laughs> Meet the Shuttlecraft Curie, a Star Trek themed computer that looks like anything but a desktop computer. This project is the outcome of nearly three months of designing, 3D printing, sanding, painting, and wiring. And the best way to show that process is this awesome Shuttlecraft assembly montage. Enjoy. Now, the journey to completion was paved with multiple failures and missteps along the way, especially with the 3D printing portion. All of these failures occurred for different reasons. The x-axis binding up on the spool holder, a random power outage, and even a failure that, well, I'm pretty lucky to have caught on camera. Basically, the filament wrapped itself around the filament holder and essentially tied it off, leaving us in a position where the only thing that could move was the printer itself. And it danced like this for over 20 minutes until it, mercifully, managed to unplug itself, with the only real damage being yet another failed print. After all that though, we finally got there, with the original case sporting a rather Christmassy red and green color scheme. From there it was hours of sanding and painting to get it to look just right, followed by designing and printing water slide decals that really make it look the part. Finally, I hit all the parts with an acrylic clear coat to give it a hardened, more durable finish. Tough little ship. And after installing all the electronics and assembling the finished case, it was time to add one final detail. A perfectly Star Trek themed badge from Geekenspiel. 
If you're ever doing a retro build, you should definitely check out his eBay store. He's recreated just about every old computer badge that you can think of. <laughs> Shiny. I've crammed in as many functional details as I could, trying to hide them in plain sight. The power and reset buttons are the small panels located directly behind the side windows. Speaking of which, the windows themselves are vented, allowing airflow for the 80mm Noctua fan installed in the forward hull. Then, to help even more with airflow, there are two 40mm Noctua fans installed in the back channels here to help direct air out the back. The motherboard, processor, hard drive, and power supply are all mounted on a tray that slides out the back panel, making for easy upgrades and repairs in the future. What about front panel connectivity, you ask? Well, I've got that covered. Behind these caps, at the end of each nacelle, are two USB ports, which are the perfect place to insert your officially assigned Starfleet personal storage device. To get those USB ports installed and wired, I turned to some custom PCBs I designed and had manufactured by the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. You know, by the 24th century, when you need a custom PCB, you'll be able to just go to the nearest replicator, tell the computer what you need, and it'll materialize right before your eyes. But until replicators exist, the closest you can get is the services from PCBWay. From blank PCBs that start at just $5 for five boards to 3D printing services that give you a wide range of materials to choose from, PCBWay is like having access to your own personal replicator that delivers your items directly by mail. You just create your custom PCB designs in your favorite software, upload them to the PCBWay website for validation, and they'll be on their way to you in as little as 24 hours. And if you don't feel like soldering, they offer fully populated boards as well, so your new PCBs will arrive ready to use right out of the box. First time customers to PCBWay get a $5 discount coupon on their first order, which means you'll often only pay for shipping. So why not take your next project to the next level by checking out PCBWay by clicking on the link in this video's description. You know, it's weird, I ordered a prune juice from the replicator earlier and it came out in this. And we don't even have a Quarks here on Earth. I added addressable RGB LED strips to each of the nacelles to bring them to life and give them a proper glow. I went with a high density strip to make sure that the light is nice and even. For each inch of the strip, there are four lights. So now that we've got the perfect Star Trek computer, we need to pair it with some equally perfect Star Trek accessories, starting with a Galaxy Class Master System desk pad that perfectly recreates the display from the Enterprise in the next generation. And as much as I'd like to fully control this machine using some sort of LCARS interface, sometimes you've just got to use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. I chose a Black Shark mini mechanical keyboard, but it wasn't very Star Trek themed. So I ordered a bunch of keycaps in the colors that make up the LCARS display and customized it to fit the project. Little life forms, you precious little life forms. Where are you? Now, for the mouse, I'll admit that I definitely went more form over function by using this Star Trek phaser mouse. It's uh, actually a serial ball mouse that I needed to order a USB to serial adapter for just to be able to plug it in. And while some people might find it uncomfortable to game with, I wasn't even phased by it. I know, I know. It's stunning that I would leave that type of pun in. And with a few other accessories tossed in, here we have the final setup. Who would have thought that they'd still be running Windows 10 in the 24th century? Honestly, I would think that OS2 Warp would be more suitable. While most controls are still going to be handled with the traditional keyboard and mouse, I also customized this old Windows 10 tablet into a pad which is capable of controlling the LEDs for the nacelles, and it all uses a proper LCARS interface. The LEDs have a few modes, like always on or always off, but the light controller I designed and built for them also monitors for hard drive activity, allowing a mode that has the lights flicker from bright to dim 
whenever the computer tries to access the disc. And you can also control the brightness of the LEDs from the display on the pad. The pad isn't just for light control either. It also acts as a multimedia controller, allowing you to navigate your way through your favorite Star Trek episodes and movies. Hardware-wise, the Shuttle PC is a pretty capable gaming machine, if this was 2014. It's got an i5-4460 clocked at 3.2GHz, coupled with an NVIDIA GTX 650. It's also got 16 gigs of DDR3 and a 512 gig SSD. I figured since this is my first time designing a case, it was probably a good idea to use components that would test the thermals of the case without risking more modern expensive components. But if this video does well, I'm going to build a second version of it with all modern parts, so make sure to stick around for that. The first thing I loaded up after Windows was installed was the venerable System 47 screensaver. I know that most people don't use screensavers anymore, but I've included this on my computers for as long as I can remember. It perfectly recreates various displays from the Enterprise-E, and I couldn't build this machine without including it. And I couldn't do a Star Trek themed machine without loading it with Star Trek games. Games like Elite Force, a Quake 3 based Star Trek themed first person shooter that places you on the USS Voyager on the Hazard Team. Or Star Trek Armada, a real time strategy game that brings back Picard, Worf, Martok, Sela, and even Locutus, with their actors returning to voice their digital counterparts. And as a side note, Star Trek Armada is my favorite Star Trek game of all time. It's pretty simple as far as an RTS goes, but I have spent way too many hours playing it over the years. But I don't regret it at all. And Star Trek Online, an MMO that's been going for over a decade, which starts you off as an ensign and lets you work your way up the ranks, and even eventually lets you have your own ship. This is another one that brings back a lot of the actors from Star Trek to voice their characters. And of course, if you wanted to, for some reason, play a game that isn't Star Trek based, well, there's nothing to stop you. Counter-Strike Global Offensive held mostly consistently above 60 frames per second while running at 1080p with medium settings. Nothing to write home about, but certainly playable enough to be enjoyable. Now, when it comes to software, there's actually tons of Star Trek programs and applications out there. Applications like Star Trek Encyclopedia which was recently donated by good friend of the channel Bob Carnes. Thanks, Bob. Unfortunately, it didn't want to run directly under Windows 10. But after building ourselves a Windows 98 virtual machine using VirtualBox, we were finally ready to delve into the Encyclopedia Star Trekia. This program is the perfect snapshot of how interactive information software looked and worked in the 90s. The video clips are all low resolution, and the screen only looks right at a resolution of 800 by 600. Beautiful. And since we've got that VM working, why not take a look at Star Trek Borg? It's a choose-your-own-adventure game that's hosted by John Delancey as Q. It's kind of like a lost episode featuring a crew that you've never heard of. And there's so much more that we could do with this because, well, it's just a fully functional PC built into a case that makes it look like anything but. Honestly, I've been designing and 3D printing for years, and I feel like this is the coolest thing that I've ever built. I think that if this had been what showed up to the shop that day, I would have lost my mind. But what else would you guys add to it? What additional details or features do you think should fit into the hypothetical version 2 of this case down the line? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you all again real soon.